Welcome to another in our series of InterGraph CAD Works and Analysis Solutions videos featuring Caesar 2. We're going to modify the mass model. So we're going to say, we're going to click on the, the plus sign to add a line to this. Our current uh, pointer is at row 2. I click on the plus sign, and there you go. We've got row 3 sitting on our model now. And we now have the structure set up for the data collection. And all the, well, most of all these tabs are set up the same way. Uh, we have a, a, a title at each, uh, on each column, and then we supply the data down here. All right. Now, the first column will be the mass. If I put a positive number, it will add that mass to the calculated mass for that node. If I put a negative number, that will be subtracted from the calculated mass at that node. When I talk about the calculated mass. What's that? Well, in your static model, you have these nodes in your system. The program will uh, automatically segment each straight, each run of pipe between those two nodes and throw half the mass into the preceding node and the other half in the following node throughout the model. So we are working with the, these lumps. So we're no longer looking at a continuous beam, but I think of it more as a bunch of bowling balls separate by springs and we're watching how these bowling balls are moving around and they're being controlled by these springs or other boundary conditions. Okay? So that will determine what the calculated mass will be for each node in the piping system. And then you can change it if you wish. Rather tedious process, but you can do it. If I put a zero in here, it will eliminate all the mass. Okay? Now, I can specify individual directions. If I'm doing a lumped mass model, I can specify x, y, Z or say all for all three degrees of freedom. If I'm doing a, a um, consistent mass approach, and we'll talk about these terms later, I can also fool around with rotational terms. Okay. Uh, I will specify the start node or the node where we affect it. So if I say I've got uh, plus 100 pounds mass at node 10, that will be added to node 10 in this whatever direction is specified. I can also use this for a series of nodes, I can specify a start node, a stop node, and an increment. It's like a do loop. Start at 10, go to 500 by 10. So it'd be 10, 20, 30, all the way to 500. These are optional. You'll see this OPT throughout the, the input screens. Uh, don't worry about it if you don't want to use them. Okay. Now, um, the second tab that we have here, snubbers, uh, this will allow us to add I'll say shock absorbers or snubbers to our piping systems. Now, we removed the damping term from our equation of, of, of force balance, that's C x dot. Well, that was basically system damping, the, the, the uh, damping in the material of our structure itself. But there also are point dampers, and we do not have them in the program. We instead model these dampers or these shock absorbers or snubbers as stiffnesses usually a very stiff spring. Now, there are two types of snubbers out there in the field. One is the mechanical snubber. Uh, here's a uh, base, the snubber right there. We're uh, connecting this piece of pipe to uh, some structure over here. Now, this snubber will allow the, the pipe to move slowly back and forth, we'll say thermal growth. But if it wants to move quickly, uh, this will lock up the, because usually it's used uh, rotational inertia. You have a spinning, uh, disc uh, on a threaded, tightly threaded uh, shaft, and it doesn't want to move too fast, but it does move. There's also um, hydraulic snubbers. Here we have a connection point and a connection point, and uh, as the piston moves in and out of this uh, cylinder, it, it pulls or pushes hydraulic fluid into this other cylinder, and that will then, uh, that the, the viscous component of this oil motion will, will slow the motion of the the shaft. So we will add these then as um, stiffnesses. You specify the stiffness, the direction, the node where you're applying it, and as an option, if you have a connecting node to a structure, you can put that node in as well. Control parameters. This is where most of your work will be done. So the, the lumped mass and the snubbers modify the, the uh, dynamic model, changing mass, changing stiffness, you know. Uh, omega squared to k over m stuff. But as far as uh, 
running the analysis, we're going to work with these control parameters. And we have a very limited set here to work with, only six lines of data to discuss. Oh, and by the way, I've never used advanced uh, tab. I have no interest in going there today. So control parameters. We see um, the first two we're going to talk about first. Uh, oh, before we go there, uh, this DEF stands for default. It, this is a button. If I push it, whatever was in that cell will go back to the default value. Here the default is, there, these are all default settings right now. Okay, so if you ever want to go back to default, just push that button. Uh, I will enter data in this uh, single cell here for each of these. Uh, note that you can press F1 if you need help on, on these fields. Okay. Now, the first uh, uh, point we have here is the non. I'll go back. The nonlinear conditions, rows one and two, they handle nonlinear conditions that are modeled. Remember that our our system uh, equation, k minus m omega squared times x equals zero, that's a, a a a constant k. It is a linear system that we're working with. But our Caesar two static model allows nonlinear conditions. You can lift off supports. You can close gaps on guides. Uh, you have friction. So all these nonlinear conditions have to be somehow eliminated from the dynamic model. Okay. Uh, in most cases, uh, you'll want to evaluate the, the dynamic response in an operating state of the piping system. Now, Caesar 2 makes this easy because the program, if you have nonlinears, you'll have to run the static analysis first. The, the program will actually list all the static analyses that were run, and you can set the nonlinear supports based on the current state of that analysis, the operating case, the installed case, operating case number two, whatever. Let's look at an example. Here's a piping system that in the cold position we have a, or the model position, we have a plus Y restraint, and the, uh, the pipe can pick up off that restraint or rest on that restraint. Okay. Uh, when I run the analysis, let's say the piping system lifts off the support. So this is the operating position of the piping system. The support is not in contact. If I choose this operating case as my uh, configuration of supports for the non for the static excuse me for the dynamic analysis, the program will have no restraint in it at all. Is this always right? Well, no. Uh, if I put some load in the piping system, the piping system might start moving far enough dynamically that it would come in contact with the support. Well, that's not what we handle. So we're going to, we'll keep an eye on that when we put load in the piping system. But for now, we're just calculating natural frequencies and we're assuming no support. If, on the other hand, when it went into operation, or this is another operating case, let's say we have changed the, the fluid density, or so have now the fluid running through the system, operating position number two, now we're in contact with it, no liftoff. If I select this load case for my dynamic analysis, the program will run a double acting Y restraint. The pipe can't move up or down. Is this always right? Well, if I apply a load to it, like a seismic load or a hammer load of some sort, it might want to pick up more than it wants to rest down, and it would actually disengage from the piping system, from the support. But again, that's not what we do here. Here's another uh, situation all to itself, uh, friction. Let's say we've got friction defined at this point here. And we will have uh, it in contact in the uh, operating position, and we'll have a normal load on that point, some normal load N on that support. And this friction defined it. So what we'll do in Caesar 2 is we will put a stiffness to model that damping term. This is another form of damping. Friction is a, a form of damping. Now look at my coordinate system here. I'm in a, in a uh, elevation view. Now I'm in a uh, plan view. Okay, and we'll put the restraint in the two directions perpendicular to the normal load. So we'll put it in the x and the z direction here. What is the stiffness we use? We will set the stiffness equal to that coefficient of friction from the static model, the normal load from that operating case that you selected, times this stiffness factor for friction. Now, don't go look in a textbook for that term. This is not a, a textbook equation. Uh, it is not a physical parameter. It is a modeling tool. Okay? The point is, is that if you have larger normal loads in your piping system, you'll get 
great, greater restraint stiffness, and that will then restrain more mass at that point so it doesn't move around too much. Very important thing, I, I think a lot of people see a zero as a default, and they think, well, it's either zero or one. Well, no. If I type in a one here, it'll be one times mu times n, and that's not that stiff, in my opinion. I typically use 1,000. In our seminars, we, I use 1,000. I ask other people in the class, well, here, try 500, try 200. And we all get about the same numbers for natural frequencies. So this is your number. We allow you to type it in. You take responsibility for it. And if you have the time, uh, try a couple different values and gain your own confidence in the number that you want to use. What this will do, and I think this is important, is that it will knock out uh, frequencies associated with frictionless surfaces. So let's say I have a, a, uh, a vertical pipe loop, and I've got uh, shoes on either end of this pipe loop. If I ignore friction, this whole loop will start to wag back and forth in a horizontal direction, sliding freely over these supports on those two elbows below the uh, loop, when in fact those shoes will not be able to slide that freely, and it will not be able to wag back and forth. Instead, it will rock across the top of those supports. Again, I might suggest running it with and without as you learn how, how this all works. Another point, and this came up in our uh, forum just the other day. Dan B. typed this in. Uh, somebody was asking about friction and or seismic supports. And this is a quote from ASCE 7, the building code, uh, section 15.5.2.1. It's a uh, section on pipe racks. And it says, friction resulting from gravity loads shall not be considered to provide restraint to seismic forces. So here they're saying, don't use friction. Well, again, this is for seismic forces, so we're applying a load. We're not doing that here. Today we're looking at calculating natural frequencies, and I think we can get a good idea of what the natural frequencies are with friction included. But again, this is your engineering decision. This is a very good tool in tuning up the, the system for I'll call it forensic engineering rather than design engineering, where you got a system out there in the field, you got some idea of, of let's say, for harmonic uh, analysis, uh, it, it's not really matching the, your CG2 model. You throw some friction at these points or the stiffness at these friction points, and the, the frequencies will start to fall in line. Uh, so you can use it to tune up your, your model. Then finally, how right is it? Well. Like I said, it's not in the textbook. It's not true math. It's not true engineering. But it's a good tool to get you closer to the, 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 the physical response in the field. Again, we're running a model here. We're not running the real system. And models are always wrong. I hope not too wrong. Thank you for sharing your time with us. For Caesar 2 news, success stories, and free webinars, please Google Caesar Insider blog.